to the build uh, this is another update of how the build's going and since I got my new job I'm working less hours and I'm putting a lot more effort into the aircraft now so we've started multitasking which means we're doing multiple things on the go so we're not just building the wings we're also building the fuselage as well so we're um, making a lot of progress so let me show you what we've done so let me show you where where we started with the fuselage. So the first thing you do roughly is to you just make the fuselage level. So um, you can see some tape here on the side. So this tape here didn't stick real well, so I super glued it and it's, it's kind of stuck there. So that's level four and aft. And um, what they suggested in the manual was putting a little level they just glue it to the glue it to the bottom of the fuselage in about this position so here I've got a little one off the caravan so with the fuselage being level uh, now you can make all your your bulkheads 90 degrees uh, well vertical so this includes the firewall the gear bulkhead which is this one um, the gear pockets, uh, these guys here, um, just make sure that they're um, they're both uh, level. So you would probably just grab a spirit level. So just grab one. All right. So I've just put a spirit level on these guys. So this is where the main spar will sit on top of. So you you want this to be level. It, it's not exactly level right now. Um, later on it, you can shim it, but I also haven't got my, uh, the fuselage is just on a couple of saw horses at the moment because we're doing some work on the speed brake still. So I need room underneath the fuselage for that. Uh, so the tricky part about putting in the firewall, it's a rear view. So, uh, interestingly, it's, uh, basically just plywood with uh, fiberglass laminations on the outside uh, it these darker points here they're a little bit um, thicker I think I'm not sure why just yet um, I don't think it's got anything to do with the engine mounts it, it may do but not my engine mount uh, my engine mount probably won't use this spot oh and it might I don't know but uh, anyway that's what it looks like there's a bit of glassing to be done, so just glassing in the corners. Uh, in the manual, it explains uh, which way to cut your glass and uh, what size it needs to be. And also, there's another layer of um, this is called triax. Uh, it goes um, just on this bottom floor here. So this guy here is the canard bulkhead. So. Um, he pretty much just gets glued in where he fits so you basically just push him in push him up forward as much as you can and that and that's where it's going so I didn't really concern myself too much with making sure the measurements were exact because if they were exact then I'd probably have gaps on the outside between the fuselage and the canard bulkhead so it, it's basically just pushed nicely into position and then I've just uh, glued it with some structural adhesive and uh, just put some fiberglass in the corners for now. There's a lot more fiberglass that goes that goes on the other side. So let's see just down here. Um, it's still pretty. Yeah, there, there's still got to be a bit of work down there. But uh, there's a bit of glassing that goes on. So when you install the um, bulkheads, you install this duct this stuff down here it's uh, just for transporting 
depending on your engine. Uh, I think it transports oil from your oil cooler, which goes up the front. Uh, it sits up here in this position. You can see the duct for the oil cooler here. There's a bit of a knacker skip that goes into there. Uh, the oil cooling system goes in this section here. I think some guys are also running their heating off of the oil cooler as well. But uh, that will transport oil from the front down to the back where your engine will sit behind the firewall. So when I installed these ducts, uh, there wasn't any reference to how high up the fuselage you should put them. So I kind of just put them where they seem to fit. Um, it was a bit of a mistake it's in hindsight. I probably should have put a few more things in first and then bonded them in. But um, for example, here where the keel sits, uh, I can't quite get the keel all the way down to the floor uh, because the, the two ducts are a little bit too close together, probably about, about oh, five mil there a bit. So if I really force it, I can get them down. I might need to cut a little bit of it, the duct away just to get the keel completely down. But for now, the keel doesn't get glued down. Um, that comes up later whenever I'm finished the keel. So also in the uh, in the uh, fuselage chapter, this is the inside the front compartment of the plane. This is the battery pad, I guess. Uh, battery support. Don't know what uh, battery shelf. Yeah, okay, that sounds right. Uh, so this is the battery shelf. Uh, you just make this up. They supply that. They didn't supply any of the fiberglass angle. Sorry, the any of the aluminium angle there. Uh, that was just hardware store stuff. It, it doesn't have to be real strong. It's it's just there to strengthen up the shelf a little bit when you put a big heavy battery on it. But as you're aware, we're going with the Viking engine, so that comes with two little. Uh, two little tiny little batteries. <laughs> I'm actually quite amazed that they they're enough to start the engine. But uh, you know, I, once you join them up, they're 200 cr cold cranking amps. So I, you know, I guess that's enough. Um, also on this side, I'm just experimenting with some. I've got some poly pipe there and some also some thinner poly pipe. Uh, I I I just like the the thinner stuff better. It's a little bit more flexible. Um, and also when you were trying to get uh, hoses or wires or wherever else you need to get down to the down to the engine compartment uh, it'll just be a whole lot easier to slide down that pipe there um, and just pull it out the back rather than trying to go through you know, like a little slot like that where it's just going to get caught the whole way through so um, I think the the poly pipe also provides a, a lot of protection for any if you were to run your oil hoses down there or um, any electrical wires, you don't want them jumping up and down, uh, wearing away at the uh, insulation in your wires. So they should be all protected in the in the poly pipe. Now, when it comes time to figuring out where your center line is, um, that was a real challenge for me trying to figure this out uh, in in the book. It's from the nose. This little, they've got a drill point here to the center of the cowling at the back. And what you would do is you would just draw a line down the back and you, you would just call that your center line. But as it turns out, that's not your center line. You know, I'll just shut this door, the birds are outside. So here is. Um, my first attempts at uh, trying to find the center of the fuselage. So this was my first attempt, second attempt, and this one here I think is my my, my last attempt. Uh, it it has been a bit of a hassle trying to find where the center of the fuselage is since the nose is not quite 100% straight. It's probably off. It's probably off center by about half an inch, I reckon. So. The way I find the centerline now is to basically just try and find the furthest away from the 
furthest point away on the floor from the side of the fuselage. So I just measure from here to the other side and wherever that middle is, is, is my center line. So um, yeah, that took me a while to figure out why I couldn't get anything square or straight. So if we have a look at the floor hard points, uh, Velocity supplies some little aluminium blocks. Uh, what you got to do is basically just install them onto the floor. Um, but you can't do that because you're going to cut the floor out first. So um, this whole section here, this is all a, a false floor. So this is what's under there is actually the real floor that's acting as a speed brake. So I'll just demonstrate the speed brake. I've just got just got a temporary wired um, wired in at the moment. So go uh, wrong way. So this is the uh, speed brake that you construct out of the uh, floor of the airplane. So the best angle I can get that is 60 degrees. I've seen others try and get it a lot further, but um, it has a lot to do where you stick this guy, how far your actuator travels, but the one, the actuator that they supplied pretty much only gives me this far. So uh, you can see the false floor there with the hard points. So this took a little while to get nice and flush, so you know you don't want any lumps and bumps underneath, especially if you're trying to cruise pretty fast, um, which is the plan. So what I did, uh, some guys install a, a switch just on the other side of this speed brake here so that when the speed brake comes up it hits that switch and then it turns the power off to the actuator. So what I found with the actuators is uh, if you don't power them off, they just power off themselves. So they'll just travel all the way till they hit their own stop and then they'll power off. So what I did was I just adjusted the height of the actuator so that oh, I'll just I'll just show you guys. So. What I did was I just adjusted the height of the actuator so that the actuator would just naturally come to its uh, full stop position and then just power itself off. So I didn't need to install a switch, which some guys would install down here. You can just see where the actuator is uh, just screwed onto the uh, speed brake. So yeah, some guys would put a switch on to turn these actuator on and off whereas I just changed the height um, there's just some spaces between the top of the keel here and and the actuator all right so inside the keel um, this linkage here that I'm pretty sure I'm not 100% sure but I don't think it belongs there I just put it there to get it out of the way so when I lift the keel up or down or in or out uh, it, it just doesn't flop around everywhere, so it's just out of the way there. Uh, so, down here is a hard point. They give you a special hard point on the other side. I don't know if I can show you guys, but... Uh, probably not. But uh, this one here, obviously the con control, the control stick, so... Uh, it moves side to side. It's actually... It's on a spring. I'll show you uh, where the spring is in a second. But um, pull the stick back. You, you pull this um, this actuator. It comes forwards and back. So that'll attach to the elevator. Uh, and also roll it side to side. All you're doing is you're just just uh, rotating a torque tube there. Um, yes. Yeah, Still got to figure out where, how to put some stops on that, whether I put the stops on the stick or whether the stops are actually at the control surfaces, I don't know yet. So that torque tube, it runs all the, through the length of the K 
here and it ends up here at this guy so this is this took a little bit of work um, it, it's actually pretty simple but it I spent a lot of time dicking around with this so um, yeah the tube comes out into this bell crank bell cranks just uh, attached to the trim with some springs so you can override the trim it's obviously you should be able to but yeah you, you rotate the trim uh, this little motor here and I'll actually put some weight on the on the ailerons for you so um, yeah um, spent way more time on this than I should have it wasn't anything tricky just some of these uh, holes were pre-drilled and they were just see over here they were just too drilled too close to the uh, the trim there uh, I just had just had real trouble getting these washers on so I just had to drill new holes I mean it looks fine to me where they are so So I've also been working on the seats, uh, just putting them together, screwing them together. Now I don't think they gave me any any bolts or hardware to put these seats together. So I mean I just went to Bunnings. I just got some M5 high tensile uh, and uh, screws uh, and uh, basically just or bolts. And then I just uh, did a lot of tapping. So. Velocity actually build hard points into the sides of the seats for you, but they don't really show you where to put them. There's a, a, a rough guide, so I'm not really sure how high they're supposed to be or you know how far back the seat goes, but uh, uh, just it was mostly just winging it, really. These little bars here, they're just glued on with structural adhesive. Um, what'll happen is I'll tap some holes into these and so when I put the seats on to the uh, sliding mechanisms so uh, these guys they'll just line up here so I can so I can easily uh, put the seat on and off without having to get in underneath any cushions one good part about Cutting the cowl off early is that it gives you more room in the workshop. So, uh, so this is the lower half of the cowl. Um, also had to do a bit of work on these flanges here down the bottom. So I'll just pull that out and I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. Okay, so I just had to brush the spiders off it. I'm sure you get daddy long legs everywhere in the world. So what I needed to do was... Uh, before you cut it off completely, you've got to build a flange for it. Uh, these flanges, these holes in these flanges are supposed to be where the nut plates go on to. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm not going to nut plate them. What everyone tends to do is put uh, hinges with undersized hinge rods in them. So I'll probably do something like that for now. Um, probably might do some sort of clipping mechanism so they clip in and out if I could think of something that's pretty secure I, I like that idea better but I, I do like the idea of getting access to the engine um, not just by um, an oil door or oil filler or oil dipstick door so I do like the idea of having to just I can just open up the the cowling, put it on some gas struts, let it hinge open, and that way I can sort of inspect the whole engine, then just simply close up the cowling that's on hinges with gas struts, clip it together, and uh, and be done with it. And of course, we're we're almost finished this second wing. Uh, I can tell you now. Doing the wing the second time through is a hell of a lot faster. Putting these ribs in much quicker. I wasn't so paranoid about getting it exactly right. I probably should have been because they're they're, they're not quite right. <laughs> so um, yeah, that rib and that rib, uh, yeah, pretty 
pretty quick to put them in. I, it's just, once you know what you're doing, you can just do it twice as fast. It, it really is like that. But unfortunately, when you're building an airplane, every step is like the first time through. So it, it tends to take a lot of time if you're just being cautious about every step and you, you're not familiar with exactly what, you, what you're supposed to be doing. So what we have left here to do on the wing is we need to fill a lot of these gaps with, uh, with uh, Velocipoxy and uh, Micro. Uh, see uh, this white stuff here is the Velocipoxy and Micro. So lots of gaps to fill. We'll also smooth it down because uh, if you can see here, the foam here is actually higher than the spar. We, can't have that so I've got to stand this actual foam down we've got to get it so uh, we get a smooth junction between the foam the spar and the foam again back down to the trailing edge and the end here is just left um, bare or naked uh, until we get the winglets on So what I'm currently working on at the moment is the uh, the rudders and the brake system. All I really have to do is try and screw them, drill a hole through through the bulkhead. Uh, I won't bolt them in yet because I need to pull this keel out again. Uh, we, there's still a little bit of work to do inside the keel. Uh, I've got to put an actuator in for the speed brake so I can tell how far down the speed brake is or how far up it is so if it's shut or open or whatever I've got to talk to some sort of some experts about that to see whether a potentiometer is the right tool for the job but uh, right now it's um, yeah there's another video online actually I, that gave me the idea as a uh, Michael I think he's building velocity also he demonstrated his potentiometer attached to his speed brake which then hooks into his uh, either Garmin or Dynon system uh, as the flaps because uh, as you know Velocity don't have flaps so that's a pretty interesting one that gave me the idea so um, I'll probably do a little bit different than his he's just got a straight through slide type of potentiometer I might do a rotating one uh, yeah, I mean, I could cheat and just do exactly what he's done and it'd be really easy, but uh, yeah, we'll play it by ear, see if my way works, and if not, we'll just go with his way because it does work. All right, so don't forget to uh, subscribe if you want some more videos. Um, if you have questions, put them in the comments. I'll, I have plenty of more videos planned, so not just on the build, but I also want to discuss some other topics. So if you have some topics in mind that you'd like to sort of discuss, uh, I'm probably going to discuss them. Uh, so yeah, so please do subscribe. I'm trying to get a thousand subscribers, so uh, it'd be great if you could help me with that.